Good afternoon, George. Hope you're doing well. Um, you know, yesterday or last night, um, you know, kind of staying true to the entire season, you found some really creative ways to get Jalen Waddle the ball. Uh, I was just curious, as you kind of look back at all the film from um, you know, this year, how, how have you seen defenses kind of adjust to covering Jalen? Yeah, it's a, it's he's definitely created some some positive plays for us by getting open at all spots on the field. So, you know, we know that that going into each game, there's going to be a plan for them, and then it's you know we want to make sure that the defense has a plan or has to adjust. So, we try to find as many different ways we can to get in the ball inside, outside. You know, last night it was from the backfield, so I try to do as much as possible. And a quick follow up. It seems like you know your play calling, especially in the red zone, is just you know kind of uber creative. And and so whether it's rolling to an out or whatnot, I guess when you reach that red area, I guess what goes through your mind as a as a play caller? Because obviously it's a more confined space. But I guess what are you what are you kind of thinking of in terms of uh, dialing up the best possible place to get in the end zone? Yeah, that's it. I mean, just trying to find find a some type of edge to get in there. I mean, we know that those four points, you know, the difference between a field goal and a touchdown are are really big. And and uh, the more you can you can pop it in there for a touchdown, the more pressure it puts on the opponent. Harry. Hi, George. I know obviously you try to exploit the most favorable matchups every week with Devonte last night. Were there plays that you had called that just didn't materialize because of too audibleing or how the defense lined up? Uh, would you like to get him the ball a little more? Does it ultimately not matter one iota because you won? Uh, yeah, I think all of our guys are happy with the victory. Um, we'd certainly like to spread the ball out if we could um, as, as evenly as possible. So um, there's probably some plays that you know we left on the call sheet that we could have called. Um, you know, the way the game transpired, uh, we kind of played it a certain way. And then uh, at running back, uh, of course, a little bit of a change yesterday in terms of how carries were allocated uh, with most of them going to Duke and to Phillip. Uh, and I know that's no indictment of Savan who played a lot of, I'm sorry, of Miles, I should say, who played a lot of snaps. But were there things you saw from Phillip in his one game a couple of weeks ago and practice after he came back from the ankle? that made you guys, you and Eric, want to give him a more expanded role last yeah, night? Yeah, that, that group's a real, uh, you know, cohesive group, and they work well together. And uh, they're not really, you know, they don't they don't really care who gets who gets the ball at some point. Um, you know, they all have their roles. And, uh, you know, we expect that whole group to perform. And uh, sometimes they're the same. Uh, sometimes they're different. And, um, you know, in, in, in last night's game, it just – it ended up being a little bit more of Philip, a little bit more of Duke, but that doesn't mean that that Miles's share isn't there. You know, kind of probably similar to the Devonte question. Thanks, George. Mm -hmm. David. Hey, George. Um, last night, uh, obviously, a, a little bit more of a, of a conservative approach given what the defense had going. Uh, but I want to ask you about the sequence where things kind of opened up in the third quarter, back to back plays with the deep pass to Mac, and then going with the flea flicker right after. Uh, just uh, what opened up there to be able to to make those calls and, and uh, convert those plays back to back? Yeah, it was uh, it was a good drive by our unit. Um, we uh, were backed up a little bit there, ended up being an eighty plus yard drive. So, um, you know, it was a couple of plays there in a row, and then a, and then a good execution down there in the in the low red. You know, we call plays to win the game. So uh, sometimes they end up being a little bit more explosive, as everybody says, than others. Uh, but um, you know, we felt good about the way we were playing as a team. And, uh, you know, ultimately, the defense played well and uh, was able to keep them, you know, out of the end zone. And also now with this uh, quick turnaround, your early impressions on this Titans defense and what is important to stress to uh, uh, Tua and, and the rest of the guys, really? Well, I'd say everybody's got to really jump on this film pretty soon. Uh, it's a good defense. Uh, they, they know what they're doing. They're, they're sound. Um, they're obviously playing well. And... Um, they're at all three levels from, uh, you know, level one with the D-line, level two with the linebackers or the nickel, uh, and then level three with the secondary. The, these guys play well together. They communicate well. They've got uh, um, very quick reaction to what they see, um, and, and they're in the right spot. So we're going to need to execute, you know, for four quarters here uh, for this game. How? 
Hi, George. I'm kind of piggybacking off of uh, the past couple of questions regarding uh, Mac Hollins. Um, what can you say about his, um, seems like he has a knack for making big plays with limited opportunities. What can you say about that? And is there part of you, I know there's only one ball, but is there part of you that wishes that he had more opportunities? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, he's found himself in a role where he's helping on all four downs. Um, he's helping in the special teams uh, area. Um, he did that last night. And then, you know, from down to down, uh, with a lot of the misdirection, um, emotions, you know, the, those receivers end up shuffling in and out. And, um, you know, they all have their role on normal downs and on third down. <clears throat> and, um, you know, at some point, like it happened last night, you know, uh, somebody's going to need to make a play that, you know, the defense may be, you know, honing in on Jalen uh, specifically on that play. Uh, we had some leverage issues on some of the route concepts, and uh, that was the correct uh, player to throw the ball to. And, uh, you know, he won the route, and he came down with a, a great catch for a big play that really turned the field and then created a, you know, positive scoring drive. I'd say that that play really ignited that drive, obviously, uh, because we had two really zero-yard plays right before that. Thanks, George. Mm -hmm. Travis? Hey, Coach, good afternoon. You had mentioned kind of putting together a game plan to win the game, right? I think you've spoken previously about the offensive collaboration that you guys all kind of come together for the game plan. I was curious how much collaboration there is with the offensive side and the defensive side when it comes to putting together, I guess, a cumulative game plan. How does that work for the offensive side of the ball? Well, the head coach does a good job of, of putting us all on the same page and understanding each side, including the special teams roles in the game. Um, but, you know, when we develop a game plan, you don't really necessarily know how the game's going, right? Like, you know, the game may end up being one way or the other. Last week against the Jets game, we're down 10 to nothing. So our game plan, you know, uh, goes to when you're down 10 nothing as far as calls go. Um, you know, we got up 10 nothing in this game. So, you know, that's kind of how the calls go from that standpoint. Um, uh, I think it's, it's really hard to predict exactly how the game's going and how it will go. Um, and you want to have enough calls uh, for however which way the, the game ends up unfolding. So, um, you know, fortunately for us, we, we were maintaining the lead for the whole game. So we ended up uh, playing a certain way. David? Hey, George, I wanted to ask you to uh, assess your offensive line play last night and, and how uh, it can impact play calling uh, in certain occasions where uh, rushers are getting to the quarterback quickly. Yeah, uh, I think early on in, in the first series, we had a pressure on a third down where we had Miles, you know, coming open across the field. Um, you know, I think our guys would like to have that back shoot. I'd like to probably have that back from a protection standpoint of how we called it. Um, you know, and there's, you know, some ebbs and flows in the game. I know that the environment uh, created some issues uh, for us, um, like like all road road games do, um, certain things there that that are probably a little bit easier in, in a home atmosphere, but that's part of the league. That's how the schedule is, and uh, we're going to have to, you know, overcome those again this week and and do a better job uh, from play call to uh, execution. I'll take one more question from Barry. George, uh, Brian Greasy made a bizarre comment last night, uh, citing a conversation with you and suggesting that on second and third and longs, you would just assume punt, which I, I know cannot be precisely what you said. Do you remember that conversation, the point you were trying to get across? I didn't hear his comment. Um, you know, I think for some some downs, you know, third down and a very long, that's, that's a tough situation. And, and it's really not fair. Uh, to the unit, quarterback, the line, you know, put that much stress on on those type of players. So um, I don't remember that exactly being a comment, but I'm sure that's really what we were alluding to, that sometimes some of those situations are so unfair to the to that. You know, now we put ourselves in that situation. Let's, let's not, you know, forget that. But, um, you know, when you get yourself in third and extra long in this league, uh, those percentages of converting are very low. And, uh, you know, if we got to have it at the end of the game, we'll, we'll, we'll go for it, you know, and we'll, we'll try to, um, you know, test the water, so to say. But we don't, we don't want to make a living there uh, in those situations at all. 
So I think Brian knows that as a former quarterback too. Um, yeah, that was kind of how the conversation went.